Understanding Your Covenant Rights by David O. Oyedeko, a scriptural guide to supernatural breakthroughs. Introduction Understanding is the key to everything in the kingdom. The word of God says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all your gettings, no matter what other thing you get, get understanding. Proverbs 4 verse 7 paraphrased. You cannot enter into your inheritance without understanding. In Mark chapter 4 verse 11 and 12, Jesus said to his disciples, And he said unto Unto them, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables, that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. When you are born again, you are ushered into the realm where you are able to take delivery of the keys of the kingdom of heaven to open whichever door you desire what do these keys symbolize jesus upbraiding the lawyers in his days said woe unto you lawyers for you have taken away the key of knowledge luke 11 verse 52 in the kingdom of god the keys symbolize knowledge appropriate and adequate insight on any issue issue gives you authority to determine what happens. We belong to a kingdom that essentially operates on keys of insight. Many innocent people in the body of Christ are victims of the lies of the devil because they don't know or have the truth on the matter in question. When understanding comes, victory follows because you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free and whosoever the truth shall make free he shall be free indeed john 8 verse 32 36 most times when you fail an exam it is because you don't know enough not because you don't know anything if you score 30 percent you got something but you didn't get enough points to make for a pass it is not enough to know something you must know enough of the thing that is understanding scripturally understanding simply connotes being able to see what god is saying apostle paul in praying for the ephesian church laid great emphasis on the subject of understanding in his prayer he said that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him the eyes of your understanding understanding being enlightened and ye may know that what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints ephesians 1 verse 17 to 18 as the eyes of your understanding become enlightened you gain access to the riches of your inheritance not only that you are able to see his power at work in you which enables you to take delivery of your inheritance you become aggressive in your faith because you can see the inheritance and you can see the empowerment available to possess it understanding tells you it is there even when nobody else can see it because you have seen it in the word of god the redeemed has a rich heritage in christ it is his heritage to be fruitful prosperous healthy and enjoy long life among other things because jesus came to give the believer an abundantly good life john 10 verse 10 if that is so why then are many people in christ still victims of life why is poverty ravaging many christians why are many still barren in almost every area of life 
why are many ardent churchgoers still easy praise to the devil why are some believers being daily devastated by all manner of afflictions it is because they lack understanding of their covenant rights they know it but don't understand how to access it understanding your covenant rights is prepared as a guidebook to practically transport the believer to the realm of his sonship and dominion in christ the realm that makes him or her become a touch knot for the devil it is a practical handbook that removes the veil of ignorance that has stagnated many destinies and been the bane of christendom it is a book that establishes the fact that you do not wish a miracle rather you walk it it makes you understand that for every promise in the scriptures there are conditions for its fulfillment and those conditions must be met before the promise is converted into a covenant mary the mother of jesus said whatsoever he saith unto you do it john 2 verse 5 there is always what to do to tap into your rich heritage in christ that is essentially what this book in your hand is all about to demolish the myth that miracles are not real miracles are not myths neither are they magic they are provoked by your faithful compliance with and obedience to the demands of scriptures this book emphasizes that you need to possess a working knowledge of god's covenant to have the victorious life if you have problems in any area of your life it is because you have have knowingly or unknowingly neglected to do something that god expects the thoughts in this book conform with hosea 4 verse 6 they maintain that your greatest enemy is not the woman or the man next door or the proverbial village witch but your ignorance of what you must do to have dominion this book is one definite manner to effect that change you need to have the good life that you have always desired what then is a covenant a covenant is like a contract it involves two or more people in this case it involves just you and god god is the covenantor and you are the covenantee the beneficiary of the deal a covenant unlike a promise is a vow that cannot be broken once the request required conditions have been met there is no force in the kingdom of god that is stronger than the force of the covenant as a covenantor god's path is always sure and constant while man has always been the only unstable and variable party god's commitment to the covenant is so strong that he said my covenant will i not break nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips psalm 89 verse 34 the covenant is stronger than any climate there is no economic dearth or crisis that can break its efficacy god's covenant with the man is as eternal as night and day thus saith the lord if ye break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night and that there should not be day and night in their season then may also my covenant be broken with david my servant that he should not have a son to reign upon his throne and with the levites the priests my ministers jeremiah Jeremiah 33 verse 20 to 21. The Bible is loaded with promises from God to make our destinies colorful and enviable on the earth. But there are certain conditions that must be met before any of the promises can be fulfilled in your life. Meeting the demands of these conditions are what turn the promises into a covenant and 
commit God to do his own part. Once you locate the covenant demands in any area and do them, your struggles will be over and your victory is guaranteed on that issue. The case is settled in your favor. Someone rightly said, Foolish men believe in luck, but wise men believe in cause and effect. Even if there is anything called luck, no one is luckier than another in Christ. All are equally accepted in the beloved because God is no respecter of persons. Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and walketh righteousness is accepted with him. Acts 10 verse 34-35 Everyone that obeys the terms of the covenant becomes a bona fide beneficiary of God's blessings. He will not bless one above another if they are walking equally in the covenant. Every individual that God called, he justified. Everyone he justified, he equally glorified. Romans 8 verse 30. Your obedience and your absolute trust and total dependence are what matter most. Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when heat cometh but her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought neither shall cease from yielding fruit jeremiah 17 verse 7 8 that is the realm of unending breakthroughs you become an all-round commander under all circumstances those who walk in his ways cause waves in this book I have addressed the major concerns of man from his need for divine favor to his family affairs, business, health, and spiritual concerns. For each of the 12 subjects addressed, there is a description of what is meant, its value, why you need it from God, and most importantly, the conditions that need to be met. This covenant demands simply means what you must do for God to do his part. They are the things that will grant you access to the divine provisions. Therefore, in each chapter, there is a section called covenant access, which catalogs the things required of you to turn each promise into a covenant. While every provision has its own specific demands, sometimes the demands are quite different from another. There is one common denomination for accessing the benefits of every covenant. This is what is called new birth. Being born again is a prerequisite for a profitable covenant work with God. It is what qualifies one to enjoy all covenant rights. New birth is the visa to God's covenant world of wonders. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 14 verse 6. No one has an inheritance in a family to which he does not belong. In the same way, without being born again, you don't have an inheritance in Christ. That is why I believe Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom kingdom of God. John 3 verse 3. Nothing is a substitute for your redemption if you want to enjoy a covenant walk with God. Chapter 1. The Covenant of Peace. How to access the peace of God that passes all understanding is what I am introducing to you in this chapter. The peace I am talking about is not a technical or mechanical peace, but the peace of God that flows like a river. This peace is not a psychological state. It is essentially a spiritual virtue, which is why it is listed as one of the fruits of the Spirit. 
Galatians 5 verse 22. It is not temporal peace that is on today and of tomorrow. It is the peace that you will enjoy all your days. At the birth of Jesus, peace settled on the earth. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Isaiah 9 verse 6 to 7. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. So when you receive him at new birth, you have received peace. Also new birth establishes the righteousness of God in man and the Bible says, and the work of righteousness shall be peace and the effect of righteousness quietness and assurance forever and my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation and in sure dwellings and in quiet resting places isaiah 32 verse 17 to 18 the work of righteousness shall be peace that is your portion benefits of peace peace is one of the most valuable assets in the journey of life. The truth is, destiny is in pieces when peace is lacking. The peace of God sets the pace for divine intervention. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Psalm 46 verse 10. If you want to see God in action, you have to be still and be at peace with yourself. Don't be at agitated be still if god must fight for you you must hold your peace exodus 14 verse 14 when you are anxious you disconnect yourself from god but being at peace with him sets the pace for answered prayer as soon as ellie spoke to hannah the peace of god came alive in her she rose up ate bread and her countenance was no more sad when peace was in place god intervened and Hannah brought forth a miracle son called Samuel. First Samuel chapter 1. God breathed his peace on me years ago. Since then, I have seen death face to face on several occasions. But the peace of God was always so strong that there was no anxiety or fear of the least sort in my soul. The peace of God also sets the pace for true prosperity. Solomon was the most prosperous prosperous in his time and his name actually means peace many people in the church are robbed of their prosperity through anxiety everything that comes from god requires that you be anxiety free and that includes your prosperity jesus said who by being anxious can add one cubit to his starter which of you by being worried can add any treasure to your purse Matthew 6 verse 27. One other greater benefit of peace is divine health and vitality. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear. Proverbs 18 verse 14. Peace is your heritage in Christ, but there are certain things you must do to enjoy it. Remember that the covenant involves recognizing and doing your responsibility in order to commit God to fulfill his word. What must you do to enjoy this divine virtue? Covenant access. Pursue the knowledge of God. The first thing to do after being born again is to seek knowledge. The Bible says grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 2. Jesus also also said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Matthew 11 verse 28 to 29. The knowledge of God is
is a requirement for you to enjoy the peace of God. That peace is very elastic and it carries unlimited capabilities. It can be extended to any dimension. The more of his knowledge you acquire, the more of his peace you enjoy. Be led of God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Psalm 23 verse 1 to 2. Be led by God and you will always live as one dwelling beside the still waters. You will forever enjoy the divine peace of God. Being led of God will cause your peace to flow like a river. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. O oh, that thou hast hearkened to my commandments, then had thy peace been as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Isaiah 48 verse 17 to 18. Don't allow circumstances to lead you. Don't drop a job and go for another with a higher pay without God's direction. You may come under hired killers. When God is leading, he renders your enemy helpless. Surrender your life to his leading. Trust in him at all times. The psalmist said, They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever, as the mountains are round about Jerusalem. So the Lord is round about his people from henceforth, even forever. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. Psalm 125 verse 1 to 3. This implies peace due to a constantly stable state we are also told in isaiah 26 verse 3 that god keeps in perfect peace those whose mind is stayed on him great peace comes from trusting in god and nothing shall offend you psalm 119 verse 165 be conscious of his presence divine presence establishes the peace of god in a person's life yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Psalm 23 verse 4. Jesus confirmed this by saying, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end. Matthew 28 verse 20. When you are conscious of his ever abiding presence, his peace flows in your life like a river divine zeal and the lord spoke unto moses saying phineas the son of eliaza the son of aaron the priest has turned my wrath away from the children of israel while he was zealous for my sake among them that i consumed not the children of israel in my jealousy wherefore say behold i give unto him my covenant of peace not Numbers 25 verse 10 to 12. Phineas was zealous for his God and the Lord said he should have his covenant of peace. You cannot afford to be a normal Christian. You must be so zealous for your God that your neighbors will say, are you the only one that is born again? Your own is too much. Many don't have any zeal for God. They only have needs for God. There is always peace and serenity for a man that is zealous for God. Chapter 2 The Covenant of Direction Why do you need a guide when you visit a wildlife park? It is because the guides know where the dangerous animals are. The guides help you move around safely while enjoying yourself so that you won't become a prey for the lion's consumption. In the same way, to walk safe in this wicked wild world, you need God's guidance. There is a way that seemed right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. 
Proverbs 14 verse 12. That is, weighed on all logical mental balances, it appears correct, but no matter how right a particular direction may appear, it is not absolutely safe because no one knows the future. God is the only one who knows the end from the beginning. Therefore, your life is most safe in his hands. Benefits of Divine Direction Divine Direction has many benefits such as unusual blessings, protection and preservation, supernatural performance and ease. The catalog of blessings in Deuteronomy 28 begin with, If thou shalt hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord. This means that you are ushered into a realm of unusual blessings, liftings, promotion and breakthroughs when you have been guided by by the voice of God. Every time you locate where God has prepared for you for any given task, He is committed to protect and preserve you in the pursuit of that assignment. Exodus 23 verse 20. God commits Himself to the doing of whatever He calls you to do, and because He is doing it with you, the result is always marvelous beyond your ability or capacity. Psalm 118 verse Verse 23. Divine guidance guarantees divine abundance and at the same time renders your enemy helpless. Finally, divine direction terminates tension. Though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil for divine presence envelops you. Psalm 23 verse 4. What's more, in the process, divine guidance makes you more than a conqueror. Psalm 23 verse 5. These are the reasons why we need divine direction. What then must you do to gain access to the covenant of divine direction? Covenant access. Be his ship. The Lord becomes your guide when you agree to be his ship because the shepherd is committed only to his ship. Psalm 23 verse 1. In other words, until you become a child of God, he is not committed to leading you. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Romans 8 verse 14. You must be born again to qualify for divine direction. Embrace the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the most effective guide of the believer. How base when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truths. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever Ever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. John 16 verse 13 Embrace the word. For you to be divinely guided, you must embrace the integrity of the word of God. Accept and believe that whatever God says is what he means, and what he means is what he says. He designs every instruction in his word to direct your steps in life. What must you do to prosper? For example, you don't need a prophet to prophesy that on you. The word of God is enough to guide you from the frustration of lack and want into the rest of abundance. What must you do to enjoy peace in your family? You don't need an angel flapping with the wings to put that across to you. God's word contains detailed instruction that will terminate every family crisis. Be meek. To be divinely guided, you require meekness because the meek will he guide in judgment and the meek will he teach his way. Psalm 25 verse 9. Moses was the meekest of all men that were on the surface of the earth and so God made his ways known unto him. Numbers 12 verse 1. Psalm 103 verse 7. Meekness enhances your access to the ways of God per time. God does not speak to the proud in heart. He speaks only to the meek 
and lowly until you pass the meekness test you are not ready for divine direction i have faced so many of such tests in my life for example before god made kina land a reality i had to pass a meekness test i had made up my mind before seeing the site that the location was too far i was even harassing the person bringing us how did you get here can a church be built inside this bush what do you mean he pleaded with me to just see the place at least when we got to the land we joined our hands to pray and before i said much god said this is the place contrary to every known theory of church growth contrary to anything that appeals to common sense god said this is the place i had been resisting all the way to the site but after god spoke i I surrendered many are not hearing from god because their minds are too made up for god they have vowed about what to do they have set their face like a flint so god says carry on and we'll see how far you go you must always ask lord what are you saying not for the fun of asking him but sincerely wanting to know from the depth of your heart god resists the proud and gives more to grace to the humble james 4 verse 6 be in the spirit the spirit of god communicates with the spirit of man to deliver instructions from the father so you have to be in the spirit to connect with the signal from the spirit of god john said i was in the spirit on the lord's day and heard a voice behind me saying i am alpha and omega revelations 1 verse 10 to 11 he was in the spirit and he heard not that he was physically shaking or jerking his spirit man was in active communication with god in sweet fellowship with the father god is a spirit and those that must worship him must do so in spirit and in truth john 4 verse 24 no matter where you are whether in a car or even in the toilet as long as you are are in the spirit you can hook up to any signal coming from above it was during one of such moments that i received the instruction for our africa gospel invasion program ajip on may 4th 1994 after a meeting in zaria and driving on my way back to kaduna i heard from the lord through his spirit the harvest of africa is overripe rushing and and preserve it from decadence it was as audible as you hear your news on radio i picked what the spirit of god was saying to me for the hour we dedicated the mission to africa in our prophetic all-night prayer service on may 8 and on june 14 we set off the world mission agency office the first missionaries moved into 10 nations on january 15 and and today we are in 60 locations on the african continent breaking frontiers all by the signal from the spirit of god into my spirit be in the spirit engage your spirits actively in worship and in communion with the spirit of god and then you will hear what he is saying to you separate yourself some people have never heard god say anything to them they have heard of what is written but they have never heard the voice of the lord there is a time to set yourself apart in search of what god is saying in habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 to 3 the prophet says i will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what i shall answer when i am reproved and the lord answered me and said prophet 
Habakkuk said he will set himself apart to find out God's mind concerning what he wants him to do. And the Lord said, write the vision. That tallies with John's experience in Revelation chapter 4 verse 1. Come up hither and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. There is a place to go to take delivery of what God is saying and showing. There are things God will show to you directly when you are in the spirit and there are things you need to find out by separating yourself before the mandate for this ministry was delivered to me on may 1st 1981 the spirit of the lord said to me clearly seek a quiet place i want to talk to you separate yourself in desperation to know what god is trying to say to you inquire in prayer the reason why david was never defeated in any of his numerous bloody battles was because he was always inquiring of god for strategies can i go up against the philistines will you deliver them into my hands david asked god one day and the lord said thou shalt not go up second summer 5 verse 18 to 19 the philistines came again and spread themselves in the valley of ephraim and david again inquired of the lord second samuel 5 verse 22 to 25 he was constantly inquiring of the lord what steps to take and both times he defeated the philistines david did not attack based on assumptions the enemy came the first time god said go up they came the second time he said thou shalt not go up but this way god is committed to guiding you in the journey of life he said i am the lord that leadeth thee in the way that thou shouldest go i am the lord that teacheth thee to profit isaiah 48 verse 17 stay joyful when you are in praise you provoke divine presence when you carry divine presence you enjoy divine guidance guidance his presence is accessible by praise serve the lord with gladness enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise be thankful unto him and bless his name psalm 100 verse 2 to 4 see what the lord said in isaiah chapter 30 and verses 29 and 30 ye shall have a song as in the night when a holy solemnity is kept and gladness of heart as when one goeth with a pipe to come into the mountain of the lord to the mighty one of israel and the lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard and shall shew the lightning down of his arm with the indignation of his anger and with the flame of a devouring fire with scattering and tempest and hailstones in his presence the part of life is unfolded showing you the way to go psalm 16 verse 11 elisha was consulted to solve a national challenge he said bring me a minstrel as she began to play the atmosphere cleared and the prophet could access the mind of god when praise and worship become your lifestyle the voice of god comes through without any hindrance i had a very memorable experience in this regard in 1989 we had left kaduna for lagos on the way out of the country to minister in some very well-known ministries in europe and the u.s everything was set and our hosts were expecting us but on the first day the flight was cancelled second day cancelled third day there was still no flight i said lord what are you saying he said said get back home you need to know how god works get back home my reputation was at stake how would the people know that i had been in lagos for the past three days and i couldn't get a flight what will they think of me we returned to kaduna but on the way between kaduna 
airport and the house. My suitcase mysteriously disappeared. Everyone's luggage was in the boots except my own. I had packed it with things for two weeks. But blessed be God, I did not let the loss tamper with my joy. The first thing I said was, I thank God it was my suitcase, not my wife's box. If, if it were my wife's box, I would have felt sorry. But I didn't have any feelings for myself. I kept doing my work excitedly. Two days later, while singing away in the bathroom, the Lord said to me, Arise, get down to Lagos from where you have recently suffered and raise me a people. If I had allowed the issue of the stolen suitcase to break my heart, it would not be here today. You have lost so many things due to sorrow and depression organized by the devil to rob you of your colorful place in destiny that you see someone always smiling does not mean he doesn't have challenges he's only proving to you that he is smarter than the challenges if you want to be divinely guided you cannot afford to be a victim of depression it's only connects you to the deception of the devil god inhabits your praise psalm 22 verse 3 without god's presence his guidance is not guaranteed and without a heart of joy and gladness you cannot carry his presence you have to make a choice chapter 3 the covenant of wisdom the wisdom of god is the most valuable asset in the journey of life not everyone that is alive is wise neither does everyone who is thinking qualify to be called wise in the context of the covenant that is why the bible recognizes four different kinds of wisdom how bait to speak wisdom among them that are perfect yet not the wisdom of this world nor of the princes of this world that come to know but we speak the wisdom of god in our mystery even the hidden wisdom which god ordained before the world unto our glory first corinthians 2 verse 6 to 7 this wisdom descended not from above but is earthly sensual devilish james 3 verse 15 in these two scriptures we are told of earthly wisdom natural sensual wisdom intellectual devilish wisdom diabolical and the wisdom of god from above Daniel says something that shows the superiority of the wisdom of God compared with the other three. The secret which the king hath demanded cannot the wise men, which includes the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers, show unto the king. But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets. Daniel 2 verse 27 to 28. The magicians, astrologers, and soothsayers are all classified as wise people they pose to prefer solutions to human problems but as paul puts it all of them equal to naught when compared with the value of the wisdom that is from above what is divine wisdom i define divine wisdom as divine know-how with proofs the labor of the foolish wearied every one of them because he knoweth not how to go to the city ecclesiastes 10 verse 15 wisdom is essentially know-how and divine wisdom is always characterized with attendant proofs divine wisdom can also be defined as a discovery of divinely inspired insights with attendant proofs the attendant proofs factor is what differentiates divine wisdom from common sense and intellectual sense the latter to deliver efforts but divine wisdom is what gives value to human efforts when the wisdom of god came in genesis chapter 1 there was proof god said let there be light and there was light in six days this beautiful planet was created and all the galaxies were put in place the wisdom of god can be described as the most valuable asset in the journey of life it is the answer to the woes of this world before looking at the covenant access to divine wisdom i will show you how 
divine wisdom manifests itself in seven ways to help you appreciate how relevant it is to your life. Manifestations of divine wisdom. Creative exploits. Divine wisdom is creative in nature. It engenders creative exploits. In the beginning, the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God began to move on the face of the waters to erupt in creative exploits. Genesis 1 verse 1 to the end. Everything that happened in in Genesis chapter 1 is a demonstration of the creative wisdom of God. We are told later that the Lord by wisdom has founded the earth, by understanding has established the heavens. Proverbs 3 verse 19. The psalmist also said, O Lord, how manifold are thy works. In wisdom has thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. Psalm 104 verse 24. The earth was without form and void and darkness was everywhere there seemed to be no hope no ray of light but the spirit of god came on the scene and stirred the wisdom of god into action divine wisdom is able to give shape to your shapeless life it will equip you for supernatural creativity whereas common sense will limit you to common results supernatural victory divine wisdom manifests Manifests itself in supernatural victory. A wise man scaled the city of the mighty and casted down the strength of the confidence thereof. Proverbs 21 verse 22. We also understand from Ecclesiastes that wisdom is better than strength and better than weapons of war. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 16. With divine wisdom, you become more than a conqueror. No matter what the battles in your life have been. The manifestation of divine wisdom will make you skill through them as if they never existed before. Supernatural answers. Divine wisdom provides supernatural answers to life's bulging questions. In Daniel chapter 2, a king slept in the night, dreamt a dream which troubled him, but forgot the dream. Then he called all the wise men and said, You must tell me the dream that I dreamt. These were innocent people in their own respective homes you dreamt in your house and you forgot the dream but they must tell you the dream and its interpretation or you will kill them daniel responded by saying there is no wise man under the sun that can answer this impossible question it will take the god who has no impossibilities to deal with it and the bible says the secret was revealed unto daniel in a night vision daniel 2 verse 2 16 to 29. Remember the story of Joseph. God said there will be seven years of plenty and after that seven years of famine. Pharaoh asked, how do we go about it? And Joseph replied, only God who showed this can show the way out. And without chemicals, they were able to preserve food for seven years. Genesis 41 verse 38 to 44. Anytime you are confronted with impossible questions, just connect with the flow of divine wisdom by saying to God, I know you have an answer to this question. No one in this world has it, but you have it. For the secret things belong unto you. Before you all things lay bare, he will give you an answer. Signs, wonders, miracles. The miracles of Jesus were wrought by the wisdom of God in action. Mark 6 verse 2. In the miracle feeding of 5,000 people, for instance, they were in the wilderness, and he said, Give ye them to eat. And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. He knew what to do to feed 5,000 men, minus women and children, with a little boy's lunch. He did what looked so ordinary, but out of that ordinary action came extraordinary results. He took the bread and lifted up his eyes and gave thanks and then there was supernatural multiplication in the order of Psalm 67 verse 5 and 
six material abundance divine wisdom manifests itself in material abundance the only wise god said for every beast of the forest is mine and the cattle upon a thousand hills i know all the fowls of the mountain and the wild beasts of the field are mine if i were hungry i would not tell thee for the world is mine and the fullness thereof psalm 50 verse 10 to 12 the wiser you are the wealthier you become the book of Proverbs repeatedly stresses that divine wisdom is the most valuable asset in the journey of life happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that gets understanding for the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold she is more precious than rubies and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand riches and honor proverbs 3 verse 13 to 16 riches and honor are in her left hand wisdom personified says i love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me riches and honor are with me yeah durable riches and righteousness proverbs 8 verse 17 to 18 durable wealth not the one that is here today gone tomorrow is at the command of divine wisdom long life longevity answers to divine wisdom length of days are in her right hand and in her left hand riches and honor hear O my son and receive my sins and the years of thy life shall be many proverbs 4 verse 10 divine wisdom places a check on the activities of destruction and death job 28 verse 22 haven't you heard that a wise man is strong and a man of knowledge increases strength proverbs 24 verse 5 three scores and ten are your years but by reason of strength it can be multiplied to any number divine wisdom makes you strong and it is your strength that determines how long god deems fit to keep you here peace divine wisdom deflates pressures and establishes divine peace all her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace proverbs 3 verse 17 and when you live in divine peace you naturally provoke divine intervention the lord will fight for you as you hold your peace exodus 14 verse 14 the more peaceful you are the more divine interventions you attract that's why god said be still and know that i am god psalm 46 verse 10 to the little tribe of judah confronted by a large army he said ye shall not need to fight in this battle set yourselves stand ye still and see the salvation of the the lord with you o judah and jerusalem fear not nor be dismayed tomorrow go out against them for the lord will be with you second chronicles 20 verse 17 set yourself they position themselves and god showed up it is an endowment from the seven ways that divine wisdom manifests itself you can see that wisdom is more than just being able to think it is a special gift from god you need to appreciate that divine wisdom is an endowment not an achievement pharaoh said about joseph inasmuch as god has shown you genesis 41 verse 38 it was god that showed joseph the report of the four hebrew boys in babylon was as for these four children god gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom and daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams daniel 1 verse 17 god gave them peter referring to paul one day said even as our beloved brother paul also according to the wisdom given unto him second peter 3 verse 15 paul was given he was not drawing from his intellectual resources he was tapping into a divine endowment intellectualism is not the same as divine wisdom paul was a legal luminary a giant in his career but the bible says the wisdom wisdom at work in Paul was the one given to him by God. It is very important for us to know that divine wisdom is a thing you are given, not a thing that you 
achieve. Now let us see how to link up for the flow of divine wisdom. Remember that as I said in chapter 1, new birth is a prerequisite for access into any covenant with God. Therefore, you cannot begin to access divine wisdom until you become a member of God's family. Covenant access. Desire. What you don't desire, you don't deserve. Through desire, a man, having separated himself, seeketh an intermediate with all wisdom. Proverbs 18 verse 1. Through desire, a man separates himself to seek. Inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Divine wisdom is transmitted principally by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The Bible is God's wisdom in print form and we are also told that all scriptures are given by the inspiration of God. 2 Timothy 3 verse 16. Holy men, we are told, spark as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. 2 Peter 1 verse 21. It is the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that delivers the wisdom of God into human vessels. This means that for you to tap into the flow of divine wisdom, you need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit, your principal link to the flow of divine wisdom. Prayer. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and unbraided not, and it shall be given him. James 1 verse 5. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Every battle requires wisdom to overcome. Anytime you are at a crossroad on any issue, pray. Lord Jesus, I tap right now into the flow of divine wisdom for an answer to this bulging question. Lord, release your wisdom into my life right now. I know there is a way out. You crack your brain too much. That's why you look worn out. At 40, you are looking 70 because of the exertions you are putting on yourself. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. He will give it liberally without calling him a fool. God is pleased when you pray for wisdom. He said to Solomon, ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said, give me wisdom to discern judgment. The Bible says it pleased the Lord that Solomon asked for wisdom then asked for himself long life, riches and honor or the lives of his enemies. This made God give to Solomon even more than he asked for. First Kings 3 verse 5 to 13. God had already given Daniel and his friends wisdom. Daniel 1 verse 17. But they asked again for wisdom from the Lord concerning a particular secret and then the answer was delivered to Daniel in a night vision. Daniel 2 verse 16 to 19. No matter how gifted you are, you will always need to make a call at every crossroad for a definite step out of each crisis. It's so important to pray for it. Study the word. You need to study in search of divine wisdom. Daniel did too. And I, Daniel, understood by books. Daniel 9 verse 2. Paul is also identified as a studious person. A cloak that I left at Troas with Kapos. When thou comest, bring with thee and the books, but especially the parchments. Second Timothy 4 verse 13. Paul was a highly gifted man, but he was also a studious man. Iron sharpened iron. So a man sharpened the countenance of his friend, as in water face answereth to face. So the heart of man to man. Proverbs 27 verse 17 to 19. The Bible says that by redemption we have the mind of Christ. So when I study the word of God, I am rubbing my little mind with his great mind and then he begins to sharpen my mind until his wisdom starts to reflect in my life. The more engrossed you are in his word, the wiser you become. Psalm 119 verse 98. God's word makes wise and not even a child's time is wasted by studying it and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. 2 Timothy 3 verse 15. The word of God is the wisdom of God. Meditation. More understanding comes through meditation. The psalmist said, Oh how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Thou through thy commandments 
commandments has made me wiser than mine enemies for they are ever with me i have more understanding than all my teachers for thy testimonies are my meditation i understand more than the ancients because i keep thy precepts psalm 119 verse 97 to 100 this is one of the great missing links in the body of christ today we believe so much in intercession that we have no time to reason with god yet he said come and reason with me so that no matter how terrible the situation he will turn it around isaiah 1 verse 18 19 effective reasoning with god can only come after deep meditation on his word acknowledge the giver to gain and maintain access to the covenant of divine wisdom you must always acknowledge god for every release of it that you experience don't ever arrogate the manifestations of wisdom to yourself or you will get disconnected if you will not hear and if ye will not lay it to heart to give glory unto my name say yet the lord of hosts i will even send a curse upon you and i will curse your blessings yeah i have cursed them already because ye do not lay it to heart behold i will corrupt your seed and spread dung upon your faces even the dung of your solemn peace and one shall take you away with it malachi 2 verse 2 to 3 give god the glory for every manifestation that you experience so as to stay connected to the flow i repeat this again there is nothing comparable to the value of divine wisdom in the journey of life indeed wisdom is the principal thing and with all thy getting get understanding because inside it is everything you need proverbs 4 verse 7 you have been using your common sense and intellectual sense it is now time to link up with divine wisdom chapter 4 the covenant of favor the favor of god is what determines the limits of every man's destiny for his anger endureth for a moment in his favor is life weeping may endure for a night for joy cometh in the morning psalm 30 verse 5 if in god's favor is life it means his favor equals life you cannot fly higher than the favor god enables you to as paul the apostle said we are what we are by the grace of god first corinthians 15 verse 10 so then it is not of him that will it not of him that runneth but of god that sheweth mercy romans 9 verse 16 where you find yourself is determined by the mercy that god shows you and there are many scriptural examples to prove this concerning daniel the bible says now god had brought daniel into favor daniel 1 verse 9 god gave daniel such favor in a strange land that the babylonians did didn't know when they made him their master babylon then was the center of world civilization yet when god brought daniel into favor everything contrary to his mission was abandoned he was a captive but he became a captain because the favor of god distinguished him in a strange land god's favor is so powerful it can turn a slave into an heir another example is joseph a slave boy who became like the first son of Potiphar until he was wrongly imprisoned but even in prison he was still followed him and made him a commander of the prisoners and the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison and whatsoever they did there he was a doer of it Genesis 39 verse 22 Apostle Paul said but by the grace of God I am what I am and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain but i labored more abundantly than they all yet not i for the grace of god which was with me first corinthians 15 verse 10 grace means divine favor he went on to say that he labored more than everybody else but it was the favor of god that enabled him to do so everything you are worth on this earth is defined by divine favor a lifetime of labor is not comparable to one encounter with favor 
up if you place the approximate value on divine favor it will take you places it will make a high flyer of any dummy any day anytime and anywhere favor turns morning into dancing weeping may tarry for a night but an encounter with favor guarantees joy in the morning favor singled out noah in his days while the whole world perished he was feared because divine favor exempts the favored from trouble an angel came to mary one day and said hail mary thou art highly favored luke 1 verse 28 of the millions of women on the earth in those days god picked out a young lady and said that his favor was what distinguished her before the children of israel left egypt god said i will give these people favor in the sight of the egyptian and it shall come to pass that when ye go ye shall not go empty exodus 3 verse 21 that promise was fulfilled in chapter 12 and the children of israel did according to the word of moses and they borrowed of the egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and the lord gave the people favor in the sight of the egyptians so that they would lend unto them such things as they require and they spoiled the egyptian exodus 12 verse 35 to 36 god's favor forbids dryness it marks an end to lack and want the teacher in ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 11 said i returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift nor the battle to the strong neither yet bread to the wise nor yet riches to men of understanding nor yet favor to men of skill but time and chance happen it to them all this means your skill is not equal to favor neither can your ability compare with the value of god's favor your destiny is not determined by your speed strength or will you are promoted because you are favored every high flyer in the kingdom flies on the wings of divine favor note that the kind of favor we have been talking about and only only come from the lord like we saw in exodus chapter 3 verse 21 god is the one who gives favor we also saw in daniel chapter 1 verse 9 that it was god who brought daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs the bible says every man seeks the favor of a man but the right of a man comes from god proverbs 29 verse 26 divine favor is your heritage just like divine healing is your heritage but there is is what to do to actualize it the church has waited so long for god to make good his word in their lives without minding what they need to do first to commit him to perform the things that you must do to activate the favor of god in your life are what will give you access to the covenant of favor the question now is what are those things covenant access addiction to kingdom promotion thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time to favor her yeah the set time is come for thy servants take pleasure in her stones and favor the dust thereof so the heathen shall fear the name of the lord and all the kings of the earth thy glory psalm 102 verse 15 to 16 this prophetic passage clearly defines the master key to the world of favor those that favor god's cause on the earth who favor the stones and the dust of zion are launched into divine favor in other words those who are delightsome promoters of god's interests commit him to set a seal of favor upon their lives this is the covenant window up to a world of favor the degree of your pleasure in god's cause is what determines the degree of favor he will make available to you i'm not talking about the egyptian kind of favor or favor based on human connections and links i'm talking about genuine favor that comes directly from god favor that does not owe any human being a thank you favor that comes with dignity israel was in bondage for over 400 years but after they decided to serve god he was determined to set them free he said israel is my son even my firstborn let my son go that he may serve me and if you don't let my son go i will kill your son to free my son exodus 4 
verse 22 power of rest when you encounter genuine favor no obstacle can stop you you don't have to negotiate your liberty it becomes automatic genuine stewardship always provokes the release of divine favor but seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you matthew 6 verse 33 see also in malachi how on alloy committed service brings you into favor with god then they that fear the lord talk often one to another and the lord hearkened and heard it and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that fear the lord and that talk upon his name and they shall be mine to hear the lord of hosts in that day when i make up my jewels and i will spare them as a man speareth his own son that serveth him malachi 3 verse 16 17 take a look at something in the anchor scripture again psalm 102 verse 15 it says they took pleasure in god's cause they were not forced or coerced into service it was their choice and their delight to serve when you don't serve god willingly your service is not acceptable to him second corinthians 8 verse 12 so favor seeds the second covenant access is contained in proverbs chapter 11 verse 27 he that diligently seeketh good will carry favor for he that seeketh mischief it shall come unto him he that is committed to doing good to others procures favor for himself just like jesus said blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy matthew 5 verse 8 in proverbs chapter 3 verse 3 and 4 we also see how this covenant access of mercy works let not mercy and truth forsake thee bind them about thy neck write them upon the tables of thine heart so shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of god and the man let mercy and truth be foremost in your heart continually then you shall find favor in the sight of god and the man a good man is one who does good to others and as he does so he obtains favor proverbs 12 verse 2 jesus said as you will want others to do unto you do unto them also luke 6 verse 31 every favor seed that you sow guarantees a harvest of favor from the lord my friend mike mudo put it this way what you make happen for others god makes happen for you if you need favor show favor prayer let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need hebrews 4 verse 16 to approach the throne of grace boldly means to pray and that is where you obtain favor grace and mercy this is what the children of israel did in egypt to get god's attention and he said i have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters for i know their sorrows exodus 3 verse 7 israel's 400 year old misfortune was terminated as they cried to god in prayer jabez is another example of one who secured favor by prayer his name meant sorrow and he was an embodiment of it but in first chronicles chapter 4 verse 10 he secured a change in his destiny as he prayed oh that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my coast and that thine hand might be with me and that thou wouldest keep me from evil that it may not grieve me his prayer secured god's favor because the bible says and god granted him that which he requested like jabez you can employ ceaseless prayers to destroy all satanic opposition against your destiny god himself says that you should remind him of his commitment to you put me in remembrance let us plead together declare thou that thou may be justified isaiah 43 verse 26 go ahead and ask him to confirm his word of favor in your life his word says favor is the heritage of the righteous for thou lord will bless the righteous with favor will thou compass him as with a shield proverbs 5 verse 12 when you are saved you become the righteousness of god in christ jesus so favor is your heritage in christ go to god in prayers and as you put him in remembrance concerning this word you will be amazed at how his favor will be displayed in your life strange doors will open for you miracle 
jobs, miracle promotion, miracle marriages, all by God's favor. Gratitude. When you give thanks for what he has done, you commit him to move more in your favor. But if you are ungrateful, you automatically block the channel of divine favor. Think about it. When you show favor to someone and he or she fails to appreciate it, how do you react? When that person faces another challenge and requires your assistance, you won't want to give it because ingratitude has disconnected him or her from your favor. Ingratitude is a bit of misfortune. When you stop seeing what God is doing, he stops doing anything at all. If you want fearful blessings to come your way, give God thanks for all the previous blessings you have enjoyed from him. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. Psalm 67 verse 5 to 6. The anointing. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is a powerful channel for securing God's favor. When Jesus was on the earth, his ministry operated under strange favors because of the anointing. This was prophetically described in the Psalms. All thy garments smell of myrrh and aloes and cassia out of the ivory palaces whereby they have made thee glad. Psalm 45 verse 8. The anointing gives you a unique smell which causes you to attract favor wherever you go. You never lack anything and this was attributed to the power of the Holy Ghost upon him. When the anointing came upon the disciples, they also enjoyed favor with all people. The anointing is your covenant access to divine favor with God. When you make these five demands of the covenant of favor, you will live your remaining days on earth, lying on the wings of divine favor. Personally, favor pursues me everywhere. I don't go looking for anything. Everything I need comes to me where I am. I have never gone looking for what to eat. Not even when I was earning 300 a month in the ministry. Favor is of greater value than any bank account. In his favor, his life. In his favor, his life. Chapter 5 The Covenant for Business Exploits A business can be defined as an act of exchange of values for the mutual benefit of the parties involved. For example, you are selling books. I need your books so I can tap into the information they contain. You need my money so you can expand your book business. Both of us are benefiting. You are benefiting materially. I am benefiting intellectually. So we are both exchanging values. Let us consider another example. You are selling cars and I am tired of trekking. I may have a million naira check in my pocket but still be trekking because a check is not a car. But when I bring my money to you for a car then we both exchange values for our mutual benefit. Business is all about the exchange of values. Some time ago someone asked me for my greatest secret about money and I said to him, money is not nothing but a medium of exchange for goods and services. If I employ you as my driver, you give me your service and I give you my money. Therefore, without goods or services, no man is entitled to any financial transaction or financial benefit. Your business breakthrough is tied to whatsoever you do. Psalm 1 verse 3. It is when people are not ready for any exchange of values that they settle for daylight robbery. I want it and I don't have anything in exchange for it. So I take it by force. They forget that wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished for he that gathereth by labor shall increase. Proverbs 13 verse 11. Everybody carries a divine endowment with which he can render services or produce goods. Jesus told a parable of a certain nobleman who gave his servants a talent each and told them occupy till I come. Luke 19 verse 12. That means do business with it till I come. Everyone has an innate endowment that qualifies them for great business enterprise. Everyone. No wonder Jesus described every believer as the light of the world, the salt of the earth, and the city set on an hill that cannot be hid. Matthew 5 verse 14. A place of wisdom. All through scriptures, 
wealth is always associated with wisdom. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Proverbs 3 verse 13 to 16. The wisdom of God is the commander of wealth, and if profiting is the ultimate goal of every business endeavor, then wisdom becomes a principal factor in determining business breakthroughs. God gave Solomon surpassing wisdom and surpassing wealth because wisdom equals to wealth as far as the covenant is concerned. Speaking to Solomon, God said, Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. After saying that, God instantly connects wealth to wisdom. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. First Kings 3 verse 12 to 13. God is defined in the Bible as the only wise God. He is the custodian of all wisdom and it is clear that he is also the custodian of all wealth. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Psalm 24 verse 1. The all wise God is the all wealth God. Wisdom and wealth are intertwined. So wherever you find true wisdom, wealth accompanies it. What then is wisdom? Jesus defined wisdom when he said, Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man who built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Matthew 7 verse 24 to 28. Wisdom in this context means hearing God's words and doing them. For business breakthrough, wisdom is complying with the demands of the scriptures in your approach to your business. The catalog of blessings in Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 to 14 begins with, If you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. The word is a capital if. That is the gateway to every blessing listed there. Those blessings are not prophecies. They are promises. If you will diligently hearken to the word of the Lord your God and observe to do them, what is he saying? If you will be wise to do all that he tells you to do, then you will step into a world of unlimited and unending breakthrough. As we established at the beginning of this book, every time you meet the conditions attached to a promise, that promise is upgraded to a covenant. It becomes binding on God after you have fulfilled your own portion. That is why the Bible is called the Old and the New Testament. Testament simply means covenant, Old and New Covenant. So it's a book of covenants. In the next section, I will present to you three major covenant factors that will keep your business running and expanding without stress or struggle. Covenant access. Ensure your business. The first thing to do is to embark on a covenant insurance policy to ensure that your investment is safe and your effort is not wasted. This is very important because except the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that build it. Psalm 127 verse 1. God's word also says, It is the blessing of the Lord that maketh rich, and he adds no sorrow to it. Proverbs 10 verse 22. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 to 15 explain why many businesses stagnate and fail. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers ye are gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. For ye said, Wherein shall we return with a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. For ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed 
with a curse for ye have robbed me even this whole nation bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me now herewith say yet the lord of hosts if i will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it and i will rebuke the devourers for your sakes and it shall not destroy the fruits of your ground neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field say yet the lord of hosts and all nations shall call you blessed for ye shall be a delightsome land say yet the lord of hosts your words have been stopped against me say yet the lord yet ye say what have we spoken so much against thee ye have said it is vain to serve god and what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance and that we have walked mournfully before the lord of hosts and now we call the proud happy yeah they that work wickedness are set up yeah they that tempt god are even delivered verses 13 to 14 are a clear expression of business frustration the people have kept numerous ordinances but they have left the vital one unkept they do every other thing except the most important thing and so they suffer breakdowns they say okay what is the profit in serving god why are we running around every day and god says to them return i can still change your position i can still change your condition if you will care to return how then do we get into this covenant insurance policy you insure your business with your tithes and your offerings that will stop the devourer from destroying your labor tithes and offerings look at the report in verse 16 to 18 again while others were complaining they that feared the lord spoke often one to another and the lord hearkened and heard it and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the lord and that thought upon his name and they shall be mine saith the lord of hosts in that day when i make up my jewels and i will spare them as a man spared his own son that served him then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked between him that served god and him that served him not very shortly god will establish a distinction between those who are serving him and those who are not he's saying prove me now if i will not open up your destiny open up your business and begin anew with you when you are blessed of the lord you cannot be cursed by man or by the devil it is actually very simple you are not tightening out of what you don't have because tight is a tenth of your increase when you had nothing could you arrest god now he has given you ten and says return one out of the ten that i gave you and that to commit me to keep giving you in the first place did you merit the ten he gave you did you merit life what was your contribution to be born what part did you play to exist you arrived here naked he clothed you watched you grow now he puts a job in your hands and says my child you owe me a tenth of whatever increase you experience part time and as you give me that one tenth i will keep my heaven open over your head so you become uncursable in your journey isn't that a very cheap deal this is so fundamental but dutifully given tithe alone is not enough your kingdom investments are equally as important as your tithes see what prophet Haggai said thus speaketh the lord of hosts saying this people say the time is not come the time that the lord's house should be built then came the word of the lord by Haggai the prophet saying is it time for you O ye to dwell in your sealed houses and this house lie waste now therefore thus saith the lord of hosts consider your ways ye have sown much and bring in little ye eat for ye have not enough ye drink for ye are not filled with drink ye cloth you but there is none warm and he that earneth wages earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes thus saith the lord of hosts consider your ways go up to the mountain and bring wood and build a house and i will take pleasure in it and i will be glorified say yet the lord ye looked for much and lo it came to little and when ye brought it home i did blow upon it why say yet the
the Lord of hosts, because of mine house that is waste, and ye run every man unto his own house. Therefore the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. And I called for a drought upon the land, and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of the hands. Haggai 1 verse 2 to 11. Did you get the message? God called for a draft so that their efforts will not produce results. Anytime you ignore kingdom opportunities, you move him to turn his back on you. He said, they earn wages. I put holes in their pockets. If they bring it in by any smartness, I blow it off one way or another. I called for a draft. The draft came from me. When a drought comes from God, no prophet can avert it. Pay your tithes and giving your offerings form your covenant insurance for business breakthroughs. There is no shortcut. You can't prove that you trust God when you are skeptical of his commands. Disobedience is a clear proof of your lack of trust. Or when you become a kingdom investor, you commit him to set a seal of breakthroughs on your business. If a man gives according to what he has, it is accepted not according to what he has not. Second Corinthians 8 verse 12 According to what he has, God will never ask you to give what you don't have. Diligence. We have laid the foundation of your covenant insurance. The next condition to fulfill is diligence. See ye thou a man that is diligent in his business. He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. Proverbs 22 verse 29. Business breakthrough is impossible without hard work. God said concerning the righteous that whatsoever he doeth, he shall prosper. Psalm 1 verse 3. Profiting is connected to doing. So if you are not a doer, you are not entitled to profit. This factor of diligence is part of what Jesus illustrated in the parable of the 10 pounds. Luke 19 verse 13 to 27. The noble man in the parable came to find out how much his servants had gained by trading. They were gaining by trading, not by wishing or even thinking alone. They were gaining by trading. They were practically involved in ensuring that things work. Profit is connected to labor, not confession. In all labor, there is profit. But the talk of the lips tendereth only to penury. Proverbs 14 verse 23. Increase demands labor. There is no future for an idle man, not even in the kingdom. Idleness is an instrument of decadence. It is not just going to work, but actually working. He that tilleth his land shall be satisfied with bread. For he that followeth vain persons is void of understanding. Proverbs 12 verse 11. A breakthrough does not answer to your desires. It answers to your diligence. The soul of the slugger desireth and hath nothing. For the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Proverbs 13 verse 4. Your destiny is not in the hands of the government or the economy. Your destiny is in your hand. It is time to get to work. Faithfulness. Your business breakthrough demands faithfulness. A faithful man shall abound with blessings. For he that maketh his to be rich shall not be innocent. Proverbs 28 verse 20. If you are not faithful, you cannot be fruitful. Jesus said, If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit? to your trust through riches. Luke 16 verse 11. Business integrity is what qualifies you for true prosperity. When you are faithful, you enjoy enlargement. In the parable of the talent, the master said, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Matthew 25 verse 14 to 30. Commitment to paying tax, giving offerings, diligence, and faith faithfulness are what bring you into covenant relationship with God in your business. 
chapter 6 the covenant of family life god established marriage for the purpose of making life good for man he did not institute it to trap anyone he designed it to make life complete marriage is not a necessary evil as many have come to conclude based on their personal experience or close-up observation of other relationships marriage is honorable and glorious your wife cannot be the worst person in the world neither is your husband the devil the claim is whatever is not good in and around your family is a direct manifestation of the works of the devil due to your ignorance after creating everything on earth including the institution of marriage god affirmed that it was very good genesis 1 verse 30 he cannot therefore be the one behind your family crisis satan is the enemy of everything good and it is particularly envious of marriage he goes about perverting it and causing havoc in homes because that is the easiest way to hinder man's divinely ordained dominion on the earth god sent jesus to the world to counter attack the works of the devil his mission is to restore replace and return whatever the enemy has killed stolen or destroyed in your marriage and home john 10 verse 10 jesus came to preach deliverance to the captives to illuminate them so that they are delivered from darkness he said the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the broken hearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised luke 4 verse 18 jesus preached not prayed deliverance the word is light and the entrance of that word is what sets captives free john 8 verse 32 when you possess illumination of the truth you become naturally free from the terror of darkness the devil's success in troubling your home and the lives of your children is simply due to your ignorance but i will be showing you the way out so that you can enter into a covenant with god that will guarantee lasting family bliss for you all the days of your life covenant access honor your parents honor thy father and mother which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with thee and thou mayest live long on the earth ephesians 6 verse 2 to 3 whether you are married or single for things to be well with your relationships your marriage career and your life generally you must fulfill your covenant responsibility to your parents it is not well with many christians today because they have disobeyed the commandment it is neither well with their business nor with their families honor thy father and mother this is the first commandment given to the post pentecostal church of jesus christ god has placed a great value on parents and has given us an undeniable responsibility towards them the way you relate with them tells on your well-being you are eating so well in your home enjoying yourself while your parents are somewhere else suffering hunger and deprivation watch it it may be well with you for a season but not for all seasons you can't be eating turkey beef chicken fish salad and all kinds of stuff like that while your parents are elsewhere virtually starving god said it won't be well with you you say but i give my time yes but the scriptures cannot be broken it is the commandment you are breaking that is breaking you too many people are paying tithes and giving offerings but it is not well with them because this particular covenant is out of place the latter part of ephesians 6 verse 3 says and thou mayest live long on the earth this is an assurance that no form of accident can claim your life neither can witches and wizards because you are on a covenant wavelength with god your life will not be cut short there is something in parental blessings and you may have to consciously and deliberately provoke it as in the case of isaac and jacob genesis 
Genesis 27 verse 3 to 29. Parental blessings are very crucial to our well-being. They are as important as the blessings of God. It is part of the covenant that connects you and I to divine providence. Ensure that you honor your parents according to the level to which God has blessed you. You don't leave the fattest calf in your flock and carry the blind and the lame one to them. You don't take friends to posh restaurants to feast and then send some miserly sum of money to your parents as though they were beggars. Honoring your parents is not an admonition, it's a command. Proverbs 20 verse 20 to 22 wants, Whoso curseth his father or his mother, his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness, and inheritance may be gotten hastily at the beginning, but the end thereof shall not be blessed. Say not thou, I will recompense evil, but wait on the Lord, and he shall save thee. I am aware that some parents may have done certain unforgivable things, but forget that. God says, Say not thou, I will recompense evil. That your parents have hurt you does not give you a license to dishonor them. No matter what they did against you, you are not permitted to retaliate. The covenant forbids it. You are forbidden to revenge. You have neglected your parents long enough. Get in touch with them now and tell them you are sorry. Give them a seed of repentance and watch what will happen. Until you start doing what he commands, the struggle continues. After Isaac ate the venison from Jacob, something left on his inside. His heart went out to Jacob and he poured him out a blessing, such that by the time Esau came, Isaac said his soul was empty of any more blessings. It is time for something to start leaping from inside your parents towards you. Whether they say the blessing or not, the covenant keeping God will watch over his word to establish it. The covenant is so strong. I found this secret long ago and I am as committed to doing it as I am to tighten. There was a level at which I started before I got to where I am now. Start doing something at your level no matter how small. Whether your parents are rich or poor is irrelevant. If you are still financially dependent on any of your parents as an adult, it is a curse. It is not scriptural. If you let your parents enjoy you, you also will enjoy your children and your children's children. Because whatsoever a man sows, that he shall reap. The blessing that Isaac placed on Jacob made it impossible for a curse to work against him. Jacob was not a candidate for success. Even his name marked him as a failure. But he brought the venison, so he got the blessing. Somebody says both his parents are dead, and he knows he did not do what he should have done when they were alive. I say to him, honor them by doing on their behalf whatever they would have been doing if they were alive. It's time for a change. Tithes and offerings. In addition to your covenant obligation to your parents, you also have a covenant responsibility to go. God and the advancement of his kingdom on earth through your tithes and offerings. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And put me now here with, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Malachi 3 verse 10. My grandmother taught me the ways of God, even though she could not read. It was from her I learned the importance of tithing in practical terms. I always watched her talking away some amount of money all the time. When I asked her about it, she made me understand that tithe was a tenth of anything you have which is God's own portion and that it is the way to keep the enemy off the works of your hands. You can see a more detailed treatment of tithe in chapter 5. Your delight Delightful commitment to this covenant demand will keep the heavens open over you and terminate all the activities of the devourer in your home and finances.
securing your children's destiny. Parents have the covenant right to stand in the gap for their children. The Bible says, Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Psalm 112 verse 1 to 2. See also 1 Corinthians 7 verse 14. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. These scriptures show that where a parent stands in God can affect where the children will end up. The faith of parents can actually help to define the destiny of their children. The Shunammite woman in the Old Testament is a scriptural example of a mother who stood in the gap for her son's life. 2 Kings 4 verse 18 to 37. The boy went to the farm alive and well with his father, but was taken back home sick to his mother. By noon of the same day he had died, but his mother refused to accept the verdict of death. The child would have been buried, but she lay his body on the bed and went out to meet Elisha. She stood in the gap for the destiny of her child and he was restored back to life. You can do the same too. Are any of your children experiencing any form of death in their health, mental faculty, character, morals, or behavior? It will be well with them as you stand in the gap for them. Remember again God's promise quoted earlier from the Psalms. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Psalm 112 verse 1 to 2. You can turn this promise into a covenant with God as you meet the following conditions. Covenant access. Activate your faith. A Greek woman went out one day in a desperate search to get help for her daughter who was plagued with an unclean spirit. This woman, a Syrophoenician national, on hearing all about Jesus, went to him and fell at his feet, beseeching him to come and cast the devil out of her daughter. But Jesus refused to even acknowledge her presence. Despite much discouragement and rebuffs by the disciples, the woman continued to cry for the master's attention. When Jesus finally spoke to her, he turned down her request, literally calling her a dog. For this woman refused to take no for an answer and confidently told Jesus so. At the end, her faith got her heart's desire. Jesus was so moved, he said, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Matthew 15 verse 28. It does not matter what has been buffeting the lives of your children. Your faith is enough to flush out every devil in them. Those children referred to for any reason as four children have been made so by the poor faith of their parents. As parents, you need to appreciate that the state of your children is largely determined by your own faith. Be conscious of angelic covering. God has assigned guidance angels to children to oversee their affairs on the earth. That is why Jesus warns, Take it that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you, that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Matthew 18 verse 10. However, it is one thing for angels to be present and another thing for parents to know that they are there on a mission for their children. When you are constantly conscious of the presence of angels, your faith comes alive to their ministry and you activate their operations on your children's behalf. One very important 
important thing to note in this regard is the word of caution given by the teacher suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin neither say thou before the angel that it was an error wherefore should god be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thy hands ecclesiastes 5 verse 6 since angels are on active assignment around your children it means you have to watch very strictly the words that come out of your mouth saying things like you can't be useful to your child is very dangerous because you are giving the angel an instruction to go ahead to make sure the child is useless in agreement with your negative words the things you say to your children are the things you make happen for them so speak right the angels also have a protective function over your children the angel of the lord encounter round about them that fear him and delivered them psalm 34 verse 7 this means that your children are covered in school out of school in the car in the public bus when going out and when coming in they are fully covered the angels of god encamp around them shielding them from all the arrows of the wicked one in order to preserve their colorful destiny see the right picture god told abraham that as far as his eyes could see would be given to him genesis 13 verse 14 to 15 your children also cannot possess beyond the future you see for them what do you see for them see them as holy plants for example the bible says thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house thy children thy holy plants round about thy table psalm 128 verse 3 the value of the olive is depicted vividly in a parable in the book of judges the olive tree was the first to be sought for kingship it described its heritage as that of fatness and its function as being used to honor god and man judges 9 verse 8 to 9 fatness here connotes enlargement and it implies prominence as holy plants it means that your children should be instruments of honor in god's kingdom they are to command the respect of unbelievers and be sought after in society as people behold their decorum behavior appearance and progress your children may be too young to understand the facts expressed here now but you are there to believe on their behalf they may be considered average today but your work of righteousness combined with your faith and right talk with the ministry of angels will make them become distinguished among their peers always tell them that they are destined for greatness and remind them that like the only plants it is their heritage to enjoy fatness and honor coupled with this lift up your voice to the most high god every day and from the depth of your heart say what you want to happen concerning your children then with faith begin to give god thanks continually for their great tomorrow chapter 7 the covenant of fruitfulness it is interesting to note that the first blessing that came out of the mouth of god in blessing man was be fruitful god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him male and female created he them and god blessed them and god said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth genesis 1 verse 27 to 28 right from the beginning of creation god initiated the covenant of fruitfulness to terminate every form of barrenness particularly barrenness of the body every word of god is for it it is creative it is prophetic it is powerful and it is incorruptible the one who made you said he designed you to be fruitful which means he has put inside you all it takes to be fruitful and also to multiply and replenish the earth no one knows a product like its manufacturer 
and just like the manufacturer tests every product before putting it on the market god tested you in heaven before you were delivered on the earth you were not just sent here you tested positive for fruitfulness and every other test contrary to that is a lie of the devil your barrenness does not profit god neither is he the one behind your unfruitfulness god cannot be pulling down what he built he has not changed his mind he created you and said be fruitful so tell every devil to get lost many christians have settled for barrenness and defeat but this is not god's agenda your captivity as far as god is concerned is proof of your ignorance the bible says therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst isaiah 5 verse 13 what you need is light to make the devil lose his resistance because darkness can never resist the authority of light it was that kind of light that set a woman in our church free from 18 years of barrenness she loaded herself with tapes and books on the issue and went to our bible school word of faith bible institute she cleared every debris of ignorance in her life and in no time stood on the altar to share the testimony with her baby in her arms when god was speaking to the children of israel his covenant children he said thou shalt be blessed above all people there shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle and the lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of egypt which thou knowest upon thee or will lay them upon all them that hate thee deuteronomy 7 verse 14 to 15 the scripture is saying that no disease is strong enough to hold any covenant child back from being fruitful no biological reason or medical verdict is strong enough to leave you barren everyone that is hooked up to abraham through christ is a covenant child therefore fruitfulness is your covenant right once you are born again galatians 3 verse 13 to 14 let us look now at the conditions you must fulfill to enjoy this inheritance covenant access faith faith is the indispensable spiritual force for molding the destiny of man the fight of life is essentially the fight of faith for whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith first john chapter 5 verse 4 there is no witch or wizard and no psychological reason under heaven or medical verdict from the highest research center in the world that can resist the authority of bible faith that is why when satan wants to steal or destroy what belongs to you he goes after your faith knowing that it is the major guarantee you have to access your inheritance it is important to know that god releases your blessings to you according to your faith a classic illustration of this is when when two blind men cried to jesus to heal them of their blindness and when jesus departed then two blind men followed him crying and saying thou son of david have mercy on us and when he was come into the house the blind men came to him and jesus saith unto them believe ye that i am able to do this he said unto him yea lord then touched he their eyes saying according to your faith be it unto you and their eyes were opened and jesus straightway charged them saying see that no man know it matthew verse 27 to 30 jesus touched the two blind men but sight was not guaranteed until their faith was established your fruitfulness is not according to your circumstances social or medical it is to you according to your faith some years back a sister in our church started bleeding continuously for four months during her pregnancy the medical verdict she got was that the pregnancy was no more but the this woman who had been following our teachings on faith believed that the baby in her womb was still alive and well she knew that a negative medical report is not to make you accept defeat it is to help you appreciate the omnipotency of god over all situations
as thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child even so thou knowest not the works of god who maketh all ecclesiastes 11 verse 5 because of her faith the holder of her destiny went to work and she eventually gave birth to a bouncing baby boy in spite of her bleeding faith is a two-edged sword bringing home what belongs to you and keeping the devil away from tampering with it the law of faith demands that whatever god will deliver into your hands must first be declared with your mouth however since you cannot boldly say what you have not seen it means that knowing what god has said about your fruitfulness is not enough you must see it information is not the same as revelation so don't confuse your regular church attendance or participation in church activities with faith when you really see the truth you will believe it and when you believe it you will declare it and when you declare it god is committed to deliver it this is how true faith works place of spiritual laws above natural laws everything that makes your case seem naturally impossible is actually a deception of the devil natural laws have no power to subdue spiritual laws under any circumstance except at the power you attach to them the bible warns us about this beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after christ colossians 2 verse 8 natural laws are like the stone that had to be rolled away before jesus could raise lazarus up from the grave when jesus asked that the stone sealing the tomb be removed martha said to him lord by this time he stinketh for he has been dead four days john 11 verse 39 decomposition was a natural law for jesus said to her said i not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe thou shouldest see the glory of god john 11 verse 40 and when they took away the stone jesus called lazarus with a loud voice to come forth the result and he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot with grave clothes and his face was bound about with a napkin jesus saith unto them loose him and let him go john 11 verse 44 the stone of unbelief had to be rolled away before the glory of god would be made manifest it is such stones of unbelief that have prevented many from enjoying god's covenant of fruitfulness if you desire god to deliver the desires of your heart to you the stone of unbelief must be rolled away a sister in our church had all the symptoms of pregnancy and believed that she was pregnant but when she went for a scan the report said that she had five rods in her womb not a baby she went to see one of the best obstetricians in the country but he also confirmed that she was pregnant with fibroids not a baby the sister rejected the report immediately and kept anointing her stomach believing strongly that she was pregnant with child at the end of nine months she actually gave birth to a baby her faith built god's virtues which converted the fibroid into a child beloved if you believe god will suspend natural laws in order to establish his covenant of fruitfulness with you too many people are victims of scientific verdicts no wonder paul warned timothy about it oh timothy keep that which is committed to thy trust avoiding profane and vain babbling and oppositions of signs falsely so called which some professing have heard concerning the faith grace be with thee amen first timothy 6 verse 20 to 21 science says that if a woman has entered the stage of menopause she no longer has the ability to conceive and bear children but that law was suspended in sarah's case she conceived after menopause at the age of 90 while her husband abraham was a hundred years old because they believed what god had promised zachariah and his wife elizabeth was ah another example he even got into trouble because he doubted god's ability to make them fruitful in their old age 
Luke 1 verse 5 to 22. Natural laws and medical assertions are not falsehoods in themselves. It is just that compared to spiritual laws, they cannot stand the test of time, so they should not form the basis for final judgment. As a covenant child, when you key into the law of the spirit of life, it sets you free from the law of nature. Destroy alternatives. Every alternative to God keeps a man permanently stranded. The normal tendency of a man is to try this and try that. Consult the native doctor, visit professional prophets, go to the herbalist, a bit to the ritualist, and attend church on and off. For you cannot see God with any other thing and succeed when God is not the only source of your expectation. You may as well die in frustration. God is a jealous God. You are either totally out for him or he takes his hands off your affair. Paul said, he who doubts is like a wave of the sea and will not receive anything from God. James 1 verse 6. The Lord spoke to me one day concerning alternatives. He said, you have two eyes. Can you make one to look up and the other to look down? I tried it and he said, any time you are looking unto man, never claim to be looking unto me. Many have not received divine help from God because they have refused to focus their attention solely on him. They look up for a little while and then look down below and around them for alternatives according to the psalmist. Their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after other God. Their drink offerings of Lord will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. Psalm 16 verse 4. Until you become a committed seeker, your search is futile. One woman who had been barren for 15 years gave a very humbling testimony. In her words, I was only a miracle seeker. I did not know God. But when she gave her life to Jesus and committed herself to God alone, he opened up her womb and she gave birth to her long desired child. When you enter into a covenant with God, you become victorious in the battles of life. Let your faith rise up and declare these words out loud to yourself. I belong to the covenant that forbids barrenness and I have a father whose word is creative, whose word is prophetic, whose word is powerful, and whose word is an incorruptible seed. He has spoken forth concerning me that I am made to be fruitful. I am created to multiply. I am made to replenish the earth because he has not changed. His word must come true in my life and in all that I do. No more barrenness for me because I have my roots in a sure place. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Chapter 8 The Covenant of Healing It is commonly said that health is worth and I think that is true because nothing holds value when health is in jeopardy. Anything and everything goes under demand of poor health. Therefore, to say that health is wealth makes a lot of sense. The state of perfect health is the will of God for all his covenant children. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. 3 John 2 What then are we to do to enjoy this? provision of health. I will be sharing with you nine keys to access the covenant of divine health. Covenant access. Find the word. Inside God's word lies God's life and inside God's life lies the health you desire because eternal life is immune to sickness and disease. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my saying. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart for they are life unto those that find them and health to all that their flesh proverbs 4 verse 20 to 22 the word shall be health to all their flesh internal and external parts so the word represents the all-purpose drug for excellent health it is the balm in gilead to which every manner of sickness and disease answers 
this they are life unto those that find them to them that find them not to them that read so you must find what it takes to enjoy the health that he offers reading is a process hearing is a process but finding is an object when you find it there shall be a result to prove that you have found it every finding is accompanied with proofs proverb 24 verse 13 14 a young ruler went one day to meet jesus on behalf of his sick servant and said you don't need to come under my roof speak the word only and my servant shall be healed and the very same hour that jesus spoke the word the servant's healing was perfected matthew 8 verse 8 whenever jesus was teaching god's power went forth through his word to effect healing in the lives of those present luke 5 verse 17 god's power lies in his word which is why paul said the gospel is the power of god to them that believe romans 1 verse 16 it does not matter if the disease or sickness is psychological or spiritual god's word can handle it matthew 8 verse 16 a discovery of the truth regarding your total health is your gateway to total recovery god said i am the lord that he led thee jehovah rapha that is i accept responsibility for your healing exodus 15 verse 26 the same god also said i am the lord i change it not that was his commitment to the church in the wilderness will he be any less committed today to the church church of the firstborn no whatever happened in the old testament is inferior to what god has packaged for us in the new testament second corinthians 3 verse 7 to 9 people pride themselves in having private doctors and family doctors but when jehovah rapha becomes your personal physician you become a living wonder he is not only the savior of your soul he is also the savior of your body you can go to him and say my god my savior and my healer show yourself strong on my behalf today as far as god is concerned you are not entitled to either sickness or pains this is stated in the book of isaiah surely he has borne our sicknesses and he has carried our sorrows isaiah 53 verse 4 the original text says surely he has borne our griefs and carried our pains the price has been paid for a sickness and pain-free life that is what the divine medical report says and when you believe that report you tap into the virtue contained in that word the detailed medical report says he was wounded for our transgression he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him and by his stripes we are healed isaiah 53 verse 5 he was bruised and wounded for your sins so sin can no longer torment you he bore the chastisement of your peace so you are not entitled to confusion or despondency by his stripes ye are healed so you are not entitled to any sickness or disease peter said who is own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed first peter 2 verse 24 he said you were healed putting it in the past tense isaiah said himself to our infirmities your healing is settled that is the report from the word believe it is one thing to find the word and another thing to believe it faith is what empowers the found word to deliver and blessed is she that believed for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the lord luke 1 verse 45 two blind men found jesus the living word and when he asked what they wanted they said that we may receive our sight jesus responded 
by asking them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They both replied, Yeah, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And as we are told, their eyes were opened. Matthew 9 verse 29 to 30. They found Jesus, the healer, but they needed faith to tap into his healing virtue. It is to you according to your faith, not according to what you have found. If you stop at finding, you will remain confounded. For without faith, it is impossible to move God. Hebrews 11 verse 6. Faith is a must in the school of divine health. You must believe it before God can perform it. Think health. What you have found and believed must change your thinking pattern because you are essentially what you think. Proverbs 23 verse 7. Every transformation has its roots in the mind. Romans 12 verse 2. The renewal of your thought life will lead to the transformation of your physical being. You can't be thinking sickness and enjoy health. Too many Christians focus on spiritual warfare but there is a place for mental warfare which is where most people have lost the battle all their lives. Personally, I cannot imagine myself on a hospital bed. Why? I cannot imagine Jesus on that kind of narrow bed with nurses checking here and poking there. I can't picture Jesus lying like that. So I can't imagine myself being sick. I think of eternal life flowing in my veins, not human life. Because I understand from the scriptures that salvation grants me the supernatural right to share the life of God with him. I found in my Bible that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3 verse 16 Based on this, human life gave way to eternal life. When I met Jesus on February 19, 1969. I tapped into eternal life in exchange for my vulnerable human life that day. Salvation is not a reformation. Salvation is essentially a translation from the human to the divine realm. 22 years have passed since our church started and I have not been out of any service on health grounds. Neither have I missed any appointment on the grounds of health. Your mind is so crucial to your health. Let the word determine your perspective. Let it form your thought pattern. Then it shall be life to you and health to all your flesh. It automatically energizes your system. Many years ago, a doctor checked me and said to me, your blood pressure is high. I said, not mine. He said, look at it. I said, it's not necessary. He said, do you speak English? I said, I'm not telling you that I don't have. I am telling you I cannot have. They mean two different things. There are things you argue about and there are things that are already established. I cannot have high blood pressure. It is like telling a man that he is pregnant and his EDD is December 9th. Will he now go for prayers if he does he has a problem because that diagnosis is out of tune with the law of creation he may be pregnant with a pot belly but not with a baby until the truth forms your thoughts pattern you are not ready for transformation speak the word if you are not thinking the truth you will not be talking the truth for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks Matthew 12 verse 34b. Only those who think the truth talk the truth. When the word is embedded in your spirit man, it works wherever you are. If 
even if you are attacked in your dream death and life are in the power of the tongue proverbs 18 verse 21 stop speaking what is happening start speaking what is written jesus kept saying what was written then satan left him and angels came and ministered to him when you keep speaking what is written satan cannot stand it and when you keep speaking what is written angels will come in response to it you are too busy speaking what is happening that is why what is happening always prevails over what is written in your life god is committed to establishing what you say for verily i say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he saith mark 11 verse 23 when you say i have typhoid he establishes it i have migraine he puts a rubber stamp on it because the scripture cannot be broken in the school of divine health your tongue is a major factor what man is he that desired life and loved many days that wants to live long that he may see good keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile psalm 34 verse 12 don't even use slang they can slay your life keep thy tongue from speaking evil and your lips from speaking guile prayer are you sensing any anti-covenant manifestations around your life is any among you afflicted let him pray is any merry let him sing psalms james 5 verse 13 you have found it you believe it you are thinking and speaking good health yet an attack comes let him pray pray engaging the knowledge of the will of god for your deliverance first john 5 verse 14 put him in remembrance he said declare now that thou mayest be justified that means remind me of my commitment present your case to me i will justify you isaiah 43 verse 26 produce your cause say yet the lord bring forth your strong reasons isaiah 41 verse 21 ask in faith not doubting for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea let not that man think he shall receive anything from god james 1 verse 6 as an example of how you can engage the will of god and enforce your deliverance when attacked you can format your prayer along this line this ought not to be so because jesus already paid the price for my total health i have been bought with a price my body is now to glorify god satan you have no part or lot in my life i have been translated from your kingdom to the kingdom of god's own dear son divine health is my birthright because the price is fully paid he took my infirmities he bore my diseases declare this in faith and believe that you receive your desire mark 11 verse 24 the anointing oil in james chapter 5 we read is any sick among you let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the lord and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the lord shall raise him up james 5 verse 14 to 15 you can tap into the healing virtue by getting anointed for your liberty if you have prayed and the sickness is not abating seek to be anointed and after this the spirit of the lord will raise you up active service when you are in the active kingdom service not just attending church service as a servant you have entered into a covenant of divine health and ye shall serve the lord your god and he shall bless thy bread and thy water and i will take 
sickness away from the midst of thee. They shall nothing cast their young nor be barren in thy land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. Exodus 23 verse 25 to 26. Sitting down in church, playing no productive role in the kingdom of God, robs you of that automatic health policy. You can be a deacon, an elder, a pastor, or even a bishop and not be in service. Oh yes, you may have a position and not a have a function. One woman sharing her testimony of divine healing said she told God, it is time to reward my service. I'm not joking. I'm not just attending church. She was not like some people who just sit down as if they and God are the same. They are too decorated to serve. My health used to be very delicate before and I have taken some drugs in my life. One had a particular color that anytime I see that color, even on a cloth now, I still remember its bitter taste. When I met Jesus, he cleansed me of sickness and disease and now even if I don't have a dime, I would die serving him because of the way he brought me out of ill health. I have kept an 18 hour pace of work for more than two years now. Before then, I worked 16 hours daily for 20 years. Somebody came to me and said, it never shows on your body. I said, no, it doesn't show. I operate a system that makes it impossible for it to show. I am as active at 10 a.m. as I will be at 2 a.m. It pays to serve God. Take your service in the kingdom as a business. It is thy father's business. See your service as a device that commits God to fulfill his covenant of divine health in your life. A merry heart. Joy in your heart equals health in your body. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. But a broken spirit riot the bones. Proverbs 17 verse 22. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity but a wounded spirit who can bear proverbs 18 verse 14 god's word says and be ye not sorry for yourself for the joy of the lord shall be your strength nehemiah 8 verse 10 the happier you are the healthier you live the holy communion the holy communion is made up of the body bread and the blood drink of jesus which he gave to us in order to live like him john 6 verse 48 to 58 there is an account in the old testament which graphically illustrates the power of the holy communion the sons of the prophets mistakenly gathered some poisonous wild gout that they boiled to eat as they tasted it behold they realized there is death in the pot second kings 4 verse 40 your whole life can be likened to a spiritual pot everything buffeting you is in the pot of your life has something gone into your body that is creating imbalance in the chemistry of your body is something upsetting you somewhere in the pot of your life they said there was death in the pot and the prophet said then bring meal and he cast it into the pot and he said pour out for the people that they may eat and there was no harm in the pot second kings 4 verse 41 the holy communion can be likened to the meal that the prophet elisha called for after he cast the meal into the pot there was no more harm the poison was neutralized it disappeared that is the same way every poison will disappear from your body after the holy communion is taken in faith whatever is upsetting your system hiv kidney failure heart failure etc represents a form of poisoning and as you partake of the divine meal of holy communion it is turned to a testimony in your life also anytime you partake of the blood of jesus i would like you to have the picture of a blood transfusion in leviticus chapter 17 verse 11 god says the life of 
of the flesh is in the blood jesus called it my blood of the new testament matthew 26 verse 28 and mark 14 verse 24 so as you partake of the blood see your natural blood going out and his blood taking over and whatever cannot survive in the blood of jesus will not survive in your body no matter the source of your pain aches and discomfort it will fizzle out immediately chapter 9 the covenant of deliverance most people have interpreted deliverance to mean setting free the people who are possessed of demons therefore many christians cannot see a need for deliverance as it were why it is true that just as you cannot be possessed with light and darkness at the same time you cannot possess jesus and satan at the same time however what happens is that although the devil cannot possess a believer he does oppress many believers and anyone that is oppressed needs deliverance as much as anyone who is possessed pharaoh did not possess the israelites in egypt he only oppressed them and god said to them i have come down to deliver you and the lord said i have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters for i know their sorrows and i am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the egyptians exodus 3 verse 7 to 8a the oppressed needs to be delivered even though a child of god deliverance from oppression is going to battle with the devil and as in every battle the weapon you use will determine your victory in the case of the redeemed our victory is already guaranteed jesus said these things i have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace in the world ye shall have tribulation but be of good cheer i have overcome the world john 16 verse 33 to establish your unquestionable triumph god has provided seven powerful weapons for your use putting each of these weapons to work is your covenant access to the covenant of deliverance there are seven weapons for your total deliverance and these seven powerful weapons carry unquestionable triumph they carry the virtues of liberty you begin to walk in freedom when you possess them the enemy gives up on you covenant access the word the word of god is the principal weapon in the hand of everyone that desires an enduring deliverance jesus said and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free john 8 verse 32 how does the truth set you free it helps you to understand who you are where you are and what you are worth an appreciation of all these become the platform for your confidence in warfare and confidence is the greatest asset in battle for example understanding from ephesians 1 verse 20 to 22 that at new births you are raised up together with jesus and are seated with him in heavenly places far above all principalities and the past will help your confidence in every conflict arm yourself with such scriptures by reading meditating and prophesying them to yourself god's word has a twofold function it both enlightens and lightens you when your understanding is established you become a spiritual illuminant god's word makes it possible for you to put on god to wear him and then only what can arrest god can arrest you when you are lighted you become an impossible case for the forces of darkness faith your faith is your security against all satanic assaults for whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith 
first john 5 verse 4 when your faith is in place the enemy will be displaced every satanic harassment answers to the authority of your faith in the word of god only what you believe is allowed to happen you don't become what the enemy has programmed your faith is what determines the limits of the adversary in your territory no wonder paul told the ephesians above all taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil ephesians 6 verse 16 you have been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of god so satan's constitution to steal kill and destroy is no longer binding on you you are no longer in his region john 10 verse 10 nothing provokes faith like understanding no man doubts what he can see if you can see what god is saying it is natural to believe him and whatever you believe commits god to perform the name the name of jesus is a vital key in the school of deliverance wherefore god also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every song should confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father philippians 2 verse 9 to 11 everything that has a name by that divine decree bows to the authority of the name of jesus the name of jesus is not a conjunction in prayer or a spiritual appellation it is a weapon of war that guarantees your liberty from satanic oppression when you invoke the name of jesus in faith you displace the adversary without sweat the name is self-anointed it carries in it an unction that destroys all oppression every time the name is released in faith unction is poured forth songs of solomon 1 verse 3 spray the anointing of jesus christ the anointed one against that situation and he will overcome for you the blood the blood of jesus is a mighty weapon of deliverance until the blood was engaged pharaoh did not let the children of israel go but after the application of the passover blood they were set free exodus 12 verse 21 to 37 the passover blood is your guarantee for a crossover from the land of sickness to a land of health from the land of lack and want to a land of abundance there is something called the blood of the covenant and by it god sets the captives free as for thee also by the blood of thy covenant i have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water turn you to the stronghold ye prisoners of hope even today do i declare that i will render double unto thee when i have bent judah for me filled the bow with ephraim and raised up thy sons o zion against thy sons o grace and made thee as the sword of almighty man zachariah 9 verse 11 to 13 if only you will care to turn back to the stronghold you can't stop the blood from delivering results when you take cover in the blood of jesus you become impossible for the enemy to molest your mouth your mouth is a weapon of deliverance for many are not using it right so they remain in trouble i am the lord thy god which brought thee out of the land of egypt open thy mouth wide and i will fill it for my people would not hearken to my voice and israel would none of me so i gave them off unto their own hearts lost and they walk in their own counsels psalm 81 verse 10 to 12 to keep your mouth shut in battle is to shut yourself in as a captive your mouth is a weapon of war given to you by god to establish your liberty on the earth it is not just 
for eating and drinking. It is for battle. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. Luke 21 verse 15. Even Jesus, with all his messianic anointing, had to say aloud to the devil, Get thee behind me, Satan. He had to use his mouth to free himself. Until the enemy hears you, they will not obey you. Psalm 18 verse 44 to 45. You are too busy talking to God. It's time to start talking to oppositions. Most Christians only know how to talk to God. They have never learned how to talk to the situation. Start talking now. The anointing. The anointing is a vital weapon in your quest for deliverance. It is one of the most major factors that made it impossible for the enemy to defeat David in spite of his many internal and external battles. See what God said. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. With whom my hand shall be established. Mine arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exact upon him. Nor the son of wickedness afflict him. And I will beat down his foes before his face. And plague them that hate him. For my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. And in my name shall his horn be exalted. Psalm 89 verse 20 to 24. The anointing also makes you a rock of defense. That's why God said, touch not my anointed because I will not only set him free, I will plague you for it. Psalm 105 verse 15 paraphrased. Praise. Praise is not a religious device to excite a congregation. It is a spiritual way that provokes divine presence. Praise is a spiritual force that establishes the deliverance of the saints. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgment written this honor have all his saints praise ye the lord psalm 149 verse 4 to 9 praise is an instrument of honor that god put in place to beautify the saints in spite of the enemy as you apply all these weapons one after the other the covenant of deliverance shall be established in in your life forever chapter 10 the covenant of prosperity in the early morning of august 27 1987 i heard the lord speak to me while i was on a mission trip to usa get back home and make my people rich it was so clear so vivid so strong that i was on the next available flight back to nigeria i had to cancel every engagement that i had in the u.s because I heard that clear word from the Lord. It was not an advice. It was a command. Get back home and make my people rich. I said to myself, who am I? What do I have to enrich anybody? How would they even believe that I am sent to enrich them? Then God said from his word, has poor and making many rich. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 10. Never mind how you look. Go and say what I said. The world is a living witness today that that mandate was not fake. It came from heaven and its effect shows in the lives of multitudes. God sent me to bring his people out of the pit of financial misfortune, out of the pit of poverty and penury so they can be fulfilled. It's very important at the onset of this chapter on prosperity to tell you that God recognizes the importance of 
of prosperity. He said, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, and wherewithal you shall be clothed. For after these do the Gentiles seek for your heavenly Father. Know that you have need of these things. Matthew 6, 31-32 It is also important to recognize that God takes pleasure in your prosperity and it gladdens his heart. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yeah, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Psalm 35 verse 27. God recognizes the importance of prosperity and your prosperity excites him. Or when it becomes your goal for living, you may die like a goat. They that will be rich, whose goal for living is wealth in this world fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and prediction. First Timothy 6 verse 9 emphasis mine. You cannot make yourself rich. It is the blessings of the Lord that makes rich without adding sorrow to it. Proverbs 10 verse 22. That is why God's word says labor not to be rich cease from thy own wisdom will thou set thine eyes upon that which is not for riches certainly make themselves wings they fly away as an eagle toward heaven proverbs 23 verse 4 to 5 can you imagine the frustration in trying to catch a bird that is flying in the air while you are running on foot that is why everyone that lives for riches lives a wretched life they are chasing what cannot be caught so it is an endless chase not even the most valiant hunter will chase after an eagle hunter where are you going he says i must catch that eagle how people ask he says i will run then the eagle disappears into the clouds but the foolish man is running on the ground i am talking here about true riches not the many fake riches of the world apostle paul refers to that as uncertain riches first timothy 6 verse 17 untrue or uncertain riches are temporary but true riches that proceed from god alone are lasting struggle is not equal to wealth operating like a slave does not make a rich man what you require for true riches is that you enter a covenant with god for thou shalt remember the lord thy god for it is he that give it thee power to get to wealth that he may establish his covenant which he swore unto thy fathers as it is this day deuteronomy 8 verse 18 remember a covenant is all about fulfilling your part of every scriptural deal so as to commit god to deliver his good promise when your path is fulfilled god is committed to deliver his word for kingdom prosperity there is not only what to do there is what to be and where to be in order to become what God has said. Therefore, there are three things I will be sharing with you in this chapter. What to be, where to be, and what to do in the covenant of prosperity. Covenant access. What to be. Be born again. The first thing you must be to walk into God's prosperity is to be born again. We are told in scriptures that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us for it is written cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree that the blessing of abraham might come on the gentile through jesus christ that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith galatians 3 verse 13 to 14 to connect with the covenant of prosperity delivered to abraham you must be redeemed by christ that is the gift way to a world of abundance as far as the covenant is concerned be in love with god we understand from scriptures that the wealthiest man in history walked into the realm of unspeakable wealth by one vital factor and solomon loved the lord first kings 3 verse 3 that was the characteristics that ushered solomon into the realm of prosperity he was so love blind that when when God said, 
ask what I shall do for you. He only asked for how to please God. He didn't ask for himself riches and honor. He did not ask for himself the life of his enemies. He just asked God to help him so he can please him. God was so pleased, he said, that which you have not asked, I will also add unto you. To access the wonder world of kingdom wealth, your love for God must be unveiled. It must be real. It must be a burning love. The love of God is your covenant qualifier for kingdom prosperity. The word says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and it has not entered into the heart of any man what God has prepared for them that love him. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9. Solomon went to Gibeon to sacrifice 1,000 burnt offerings there. It is wonderful that he sacrificed so much. But what was the basis? He loved the Lord. It was not the volume. It was the heart with which he did it that moved God. Be content. Contentment is far from many people in the church today. They are constantly in search of more and more and more and more until they begin to mourn. Look at what Apostle Paul told Timothy. For we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out. 1 Timothy 6 verse 7. He didn't say raiments. He said raiment. 1. He didn't say foods. He said food. Contentment does not mean settling down for the status quo but being satisfied that God cannot mismanage your life. That the Father is working on your matter on a second basis. Contentment is an expression of absolute trust in God and when you are in trust you commit him to prosper you. Be liberal. The liberal soul shall be made fat and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. Proverbs 11 verse 25. Liberality. Finding a need and stretching forth according to the level of your grace to meet that need. Everyone that wants to walk into heaven's realm of prosperity must be liberal. The more open-handed you are in serving the needs of others, the wider your heaven opens over your head. Why? Whatever good thing any man does, the same shall he receive from the Lord, whether he be bound or free. Ephesians 6 verse 8. Giving to people from whom you are not expecting anything. That's liberality. Job said he was eyes to the blind, feet to the lame, father to the fatherless. He plucked out the prey from one who wanted to destroy him. Job 29 verse 15. And so when God recovered the destiny of Job, he had twice as much as he had before because God cannot lie. The liberal soul shall be made fat. Those five factors of what to be are very crucial in determining your access to divine abundance. Where to be. When God was going to prosper our forefather Abraham, he said to him, Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shall be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that cursed thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord has spoken unto him. Genesis 12 verse 1 to 4. There is where you must be for God to bless you with abundance. There is a place called there and there I will make of you. Stop jumping from place to place, from business to business, from one job to another. There is a place called there. Ask God, Lord, where have you prepared my table of prosperity? Where are you asking me to stand? Where have you apportioned my prosperity for me? He has said, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Isaiah 48 verse 17. You must be where your prosperity has been apportioned or you may die without it. The rest of that scripture in Isaiah says, Oh, that thou hast hearkened to my commandments.
covenant then had thy peace been as a river and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea thy seed also had been as the sand and the offspring of thy boils like the gravel thereof his name should not have been cut off nor destroyed from before me and they thirsted not when he led them through the deserts isaiah 48 verse 18 19 21 when god is leading he will cause streams to flow in your desert seek to nowhere too many are leading themselves so they are in need but when god led israel they thirsted not psalm 23 also captures it very well the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he relieved me beside still waters he restored my soul he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake psalm 23 verse 1 to 3 constantly inquire about everything before making a move lord are you saying so am i on course or am i chasing after an eagle like a foolish hunter what are you saying you need meekness you cannot walk into the fullness of god's prosperity for you except you understand how to walk by divine guidance and who will the lord lead the meek will he guide in judgment and the meek will he teach his way psalm 25 verse 9 the lord will lead the meek the one who is not full of himself the one who believes that god knows better the one who will do whatever god says i will see it as a commandment the one who will make a u-turn as god directs no matter how far he has gone in the wrong direction that is the one god will lead what to do prove your love by giving honor the lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase so shall thy burns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst forth out with the new wine proverbs 3 verse 9 you must be a tighter and a kingdom promoter you must be rich towards god in the parable of the rich fool jesus said destruction is the lot of everyone who lays up treasure for himself in this world but is not rich towards god luke 12 verse 22 if you love him prove it by giving to him giving is the only way to prove the sincerity of your love i speak not by commandment but by occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love second corinthians 8 verse 8 when you give you are not given away you are given for your way out of poverty giving is a covenant device for paving a way into god's blessings for you remain grateful finally to access the unspeakable realms of kingdom prosperity you must remain grateful gratitude is an offshoot of contentment which enables you to be graceful and praise brings increase let the people praise thee O god let all the people praise thee then shall the earth yield her increase and god even our own god shall bless us god shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him psalm 67 verse 5 to 7 the psalmist also says when you are grateful then you shall grow up like the cedar in lebanon you shall flourish like a palm tree you shall be fat and flourishing psalm 92 verse 1 and 12 to give thanks is to do the will of god first thessalonians 5 verse 18 and when you do his will you commit him to bless you when you are what you must be in the place where you must be and doing what you must do then god is committed to usher you into that realm of unspeakable wealth you will not only be blessed you will be a part of what god will use to reform this generation
chapter 11 the covenant of protection the devil knows he has just a short time and so he is so fierce and aggressive in his attempts to attack you but the good news is that god has put a plan in place to shield you and sidetrack satan's plan that covenant plan and your access to it are what i will be showing you in this chapter there are amazing provisions for your protection in in scriptures job didn't have an understanding of the hedge of protection around him so he was afraid and this made him vulnerable to satanic attack he said the thing which i greatly feared has come upon me and that which i was afraid of has come unto me job 3 verse 25 he was ignorant of the hedge around him yet even the devil respected that hedge then satan answered the lord and said doth job fear god for not has not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side job 1 verse 9 to 10 divine provisions for protection redemption when you are saved you are raised and made to sit together with christ in heavenly places and where his heavenly places ephesians chapter 1 verse 21 provides the answer far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come this covers every kind of attack and every form of accident you are far above the arrows of witches and wizards new birth does not only transform you it also translates you who has delivered us from the power of darkness and and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son colossians 1 verse 13 your position is supernaturally changed from the realm of the terrestrial to the celestial realm you are a heavenly citizen carrying out an assignment in the earthly places there is heavenly immunity about you that makes you unassaultable unmolestable irresistible and unharassable redemption makes god deliver your soul from destruction psalm 103 verse 1 to 4 the holy spirit the holy spirit seals you against all the arrows of the wicked in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation in whom also after that ye believed ye were sealed with that holy spirit of promise ephesians 1 verse 13 and and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Ephesians 4 verse 30. To be sealed means to be covered. You are not just sealed for a while. You are sealed from evil until your time on earth is over. The sealing ministry of the Holy Spirit exempts you from every form of harassment. The anointing of the Holy Spirit makes you dangerous to the enemy when they went from one nation to another from one kingdom to another people he suffered no man to do them wrong yeah he reproved kings for their sakes saying touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm psalm 105 verse 13 to 15 this scripture illustrates and confirms what we saw earlier in ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 and chapter 4 verse 30 respectively divine presence a third provision god has made for our protection against the fierce attacks of the devil is his presence yeah though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me psalm 23 verse 4 jesus said to his disciples and whatever he has said to one he has said to all and lo i am with 
you always, even unto the end of the world. Matthew 28 verse 20. In Hebrews we read, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Hebrews 13 verse 5. God has promised never to leave you nor forsake you. He has made a covenant to be with you all the time. He guarantees us his divine presence to boost our confidence in his divine protection. Angelic covering. The angel of the Lord encamped round about them that fear him and delivered them. Psalm 34 verse 7. There is a guardian angel assigned to every child of God and this angel is charged with the responsibility of preserving your destiny. When God sent Moses to lead the children of Israel. He said, Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Exodus 23 verse 20. The mission of your guardian angel is to keep you in the journey of life until he brings you to the place prepared for you. The early church was conversant with the reality of a jelly covering which is why when peter was released from prison the saint did not initially believe it was him he told rhoda the little girl who brought the report it must be an angel knocking because they were used to the ministry of angels acts 12 verse 7 to 8 we need to maximize the protective ministry of angels in our lives are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation hebrews 1 verse 14 angels are dispatched to every hair of salvation to bring them to the place prepared for their glorious destiny the angels of the lord excel in strength psalm 103 verse 20 that means no force can stop them no opposition can stand in their way you have a guardian angel who has a protective function and responsibility over your life lively stone nature jesus is the living stone and because because you spring from him you are a lively stone if so be ye have tasted that the lord is gracious to whom coming as unto a living stone disallowed indeed of men but chosen of god and precious ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to god by jesus christ first peter 2 verse 3 to 5 Let let me explain this further. Jesus in describing the living stone said, Did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The same is become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. And who Whosoever shall fall on the stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. Matthew 21 verse 42 to 44. This means that as a lively stone, you cannot be confronted. Anything that dares you is broken. Anyone you face is ground to powder and makes you an impossible case for the devil. You don't have to suffer what Job suffered because now you you know what is around you. You are an ambassador of Christ with kingdom immunity. You cannot be harassed or molested. You are sealed with the Holy Ghost of promise. You have his divine presence. His angels are at work for you and you are a living stone. Those are God's covenant promises for your protection. But what must you do to enter this cover protection?
protection, covenant access. All the demands for your covenant access for protection are contained in Psalm 91, the anchor scripture for divine protection. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee all in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample on the feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation psalm 91 verse 1 to 16 dwell in him he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty to dwell in him means to be saved remember in chapter one we already established that new birth is an unnegotiable prerequisite for access to anything with god you need to be saved in order to be safe trust him i will say of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress my god in him will i trust psalm 91 verse 2 put your trust in god and in the provisions that he has made and as you do so he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence he will cover me with his feathers and under his wings shall you trust his truth shall be your shield and buckler psalm 91 verse 3 to 4 trust god for your protection because they that trust in the lord shall be as mount zion that cannot be removed but abided even forever psalm 125 verse 1 god becomes your defense when your trust is in place and his covering is forever intact declare your immunity i will say of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress when your trust is in place the words of your mouth become empowered to produce effect what you say without believing has no weight it is what you say with faith that has meaning if you will say to the mountain be thou removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in your heart but shall believe that the things you say shall come to pass then you shall have whatsoever you say mark 11 verse 23 faith first then declaration second your trust makes your declaration productive fear not thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flyeth by day nor for the, the pestilence that walketh in darkness nor for the destruction that wasteth at noon day as we saw in the case of job fear only makes you an easy prey for the devil not being afraid means you have faith which immediately secures divine intervention fear is the opposite of faith and without faith no man can please god love him because he has set his love upon me therefore will i deliver him setting your love upon god commits god to deliver you this is what david enjoyed god referred to him as a man after his own heart and so despite the many wars david fought 
but he was never injured neither did he lose any battle know his name i will set him on high because he has known my name put his name to work whenever you are confronted say to any problem in the name of jesus christ whom i love give up and crash down the name of the lord is a strong tower the righteous runneth into it and they are safe proverbs 18 verse 10 this is very important god will set you on high because you know his name call him he shall call upon me and i will answer him when you are confronted just call on him lord show yourself he has promised to deliver and honor you there is no covering or protection anywhere else or in anyone else except in him isaiah 8 verse 9 to 20 those are the seven covenant things to do trust dwell in him say it do not be afraid set your love upon him put his name to work and call on him when challenged this is what will put a final stop to tragedy in your life chapter 12 the covenant of praise when the children of israel were on the journey to cana after leaving egypt one thing that characterized them was their life of exploits everywhere they went people feared to challenge them and even nature bowed at their appearance all because of the presence of god in their midst a graphic description of the amazing things that happened is given in the psalms when israel went out of egypt the house of jacob from a people of strange language judah was his sanctuary and israel his dominion the sea saw it and fled jordan was driven back the mountains skipped like rams and the little hills like lambs what ailed thee o thou sea that thou fleddest thou jordan that thou was driven back ye mountain that ye skipped like rams and ye little hill like lambs tremble thou earth at the presence of the lord at the presence of the god of jacob which turned the rock into a standing water the flint into a fountain of waters some one one four verse one to eight everything trembles and fearful things happen with ease at the presence of god after israel had crossed the red sea on dry land and witnessed how god closed the parted waters to drown pharaoh and his army moses sang a song revealing what it takes to provoke the supernatural intervention of god who is like unto thee o lord among the gods who is like thee glorious in holiness fearful in praises doing wonders exodus 15 verse 11 if the scripture says god is fearful in praises that means you need to engage the power of praise to provoke the fearful acts of god whatever is happening in your life that has made everyone around you say it will take god can be settled in your favor by engaging the covenant power of praise what then is praise praise is not just a charismatic way of feeling good it is not a religious system of waiting for people to arrive in church praise is a weapon that guarantees change praise is a device through which divine intervention is provoked and divine intervention is the end of man's frustrations praise is a means through which god takes over your battles no one ever gets out of the pit without his hands raised and praise is a covenant device with which god rescues his people from the pit you are not ready to be out until your hands are raised and raised hands connote praise just as only a child with raised hands is carried in the same way god cannot help you until your hands are raised in praise praise is the secret behind the rise you have always anticipated only praising people are raised by god let the people praise thee O god let all the people praise thee then shall the earth yield her increase and god even our own god shall bless us 
God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Psalm 67 verse 5 to 7. Let the people praise. Not even let them pray and fast or quote scriptures. The fearful acts of God are provoked by the praises of men. Let all the people praise. So it works for all people. It does not work for for one and fail for another. It works for all people. It's a prescription that applies to all people, black or white, short or tall, literate or illiterate. It's a covenant prescription that applies to all people, including you. If you want to see the fearful acts of God, then give him a fearful dimension of praise. Throw yourself loose. Release your dignity. Remove your feet from the chains of hell and free yourself with the instrument of praise. One of the sisters in our church had medical complications and was told she could never have a child as far as medical science was concerned. But during one special praise service, she danced to the point that everybody began to wonder what kind of madness it was. After that dance of praise, she became pregnant and brought forth a set of twins. Don't be a spectator in church while others are singing and dancing, praising God. In a football match, only 22 people are playing on the pitch while over 25,000 may be watching. 22 are playing their way to greatness. Others are fans clapping for them. The players keep rising and the fans go home the same. So it is in the race of destiny. There are many more fans than there are players in church. Don't be an observer. Join others to praise God. Then you shall see his amazing acts in your life. King David danced before the Lord with all his might and all his mockers were silenced. Even Micah, his wife that mocked him, became barren until the day of her death. 2 Samuel 6 verse 14 to 23. Your own mockers too will be silenced as you give God praise with all your might. Lay aside your dignity and your position and give praise to God like a child. As you do that, he will beautify you with salvation. Celebrate what is written. Praise has nothing to do with what is happening. It is a celebration of what is written. In God, I will praise his word in god i have put my trust i will not fear what flesh can do unto me in god will i praise his word in god will i praise his word psalm 56 verse 4 10 praise is different from thanksgiving in thanksgiving we celebrate what is happening but in praise we celebrate what is written and as you praise him he is committed to perform praise is a demonstration of your faith. It is founded on an attitude of God said it. I believe it. Therefore, I praise him to prove that I believe it. This way, God gets committed to perform it. You can start now by celebrating these things written about you. God said he will perfect all that concerns you. Psalm 138 verse 8. He also said, No good thing will he withhold from them that walk up Uprightly. The young lions may suffer want and hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Psalm 34 verse 10. God said, The lions are falling unto you in very pleasant places. Surely you have a goodly heritage. Psalm 16 verse 6. You don't have a badly heritage. You have a goodly heritage. Anything other than good is not for you in God's plan. As you give him praise for these promises he will remove anything in your life that is contrary to them the prophet habakkuk said if you must get out of where you are then you must give him the praise that is due to his name although the fig tree shall not blossom neither shall fruit be in the vines the labor of the olive shall fill and the fields shall yield no meat the flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stalls yet i will rejoice in the lord i will joy in the god of my salvation the lord god is my strength and he has
has made my feet like hinds feet, and he will make me to walk upon mine high places. Habakkuk 3 verse 17 to 19. Until you bought the praise flight, you are not ready for high places. What is happening notwithstanding, you must do what it takes to get out. God's habitat. God inhabits the praises of his people. O thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Psalm 22 verse 3. God does not inhabit the knowledge of his people. He inhabits their praises. God does not inhabit the prayer and fasting of his people. He inhabits their praises. God does not inhabit the service of his people. He inhabits their praises. Praise is God's natural habitat. Just like fish cannot survive on land no matter its strength. So God will not dwell outside praise. Praise is the environment that guarantees divine presence. Lazarus was dead and buried for four days. But Jesus got there and said, Father, I thank you. And at the sound of praise, life was restored. We are told in Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse and the verse 22 that as they began to sing and to praise, God stepped in. They had no power or might against against the opposition but through the instrument of praise god sent ambushments against their enemies and they were all smitten every sickness and disease every spell every enchantment working against your destiny will be smitten by the power of praise when you put it to work Paul and Silas were locked up in the prison and at midnight, the midnight of their trouble, they prayed and sang praises so loud that the prisoners heard them and God came down at the point where it was absolutely impossible to think of being rescued. Acts 16 verse 25. When praise ascends to heaven, God has no choice but to come down to prove himself. Praise provokes divine presence which silences all opposition and unfolds the path of life. This knowledge causes increases and multiplications in your pursuit, bringing about restoration of honor and dignity to all. That long sentence is a summary of the covenant power of praise. When you get addicted to a lifestyle of praise, you are released to a lifetime of exploits.